Genesis chapter 45. Uh, I've got to read several verses in this uh, chapter to gain the context of the chapter. We'll begin our reading in verse number 4. The Bible says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And uh, he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and Lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. Now look at verse 16. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come. And it pleased Pharaoh well, and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, lay your beasts, and go, get you unto the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded, this do ye, take take you wagons, out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your, for your wives and bring your father and come. Also regard not your stuff for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. And the children of Israel did so and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh and gave them provisions for the way. To all of them he gave such man changes of raiment But to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of raiment. And to his father he sent after this manner, ten asses laden with the good things of Egypt, and ten she-asses laden with corn and bread and meat for his father by the way. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, See that ye fall not out by the way. And they came up out of... Egypt and came into the uh, land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him saying Joseph is yet alive and he is governor over all the land of Egypt and Jacob's heart fainted for he believed them not and they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said unto them and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him the spirit of Jacob their father revived And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you that thou art a God that never changes. Lord, what you did for Jacob that day, Lord, you're able to do for us this day. Lord, we're thankful, God, you're a God of mercy and a God of peace and a God of long-suffering. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that you're God that hears and answers prayer. God, we're thankful that, Lord, uh, everything with the old ship of Zion sailing steady and we're headed to home. God, on this journey, I pray that, God, you'd help us throw out life uh, 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 boats that others can get on board. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us today. Lord, the devil's already tried to disrupt. Lord, it amazes me how he'll use weak-minded people to accomplish things. Uh, But God, we're glad that you have all power. God, we're glad we can still sit in the sanctuary of God and lift up holy hands toward heaven and worship you for your excellent greatness. Uh, Lord, we're glad you went to Calvary one day and shed your blood that we might have uh, eternal life. We're glad, Father, that, Lord, uh, 
uh, that day you convicted us of sin and saved our never dying soul. Uh, God, we're glad that we're sitting in the house of God today, that we're not in jail somewhere, we're not in a, a, a bar room somewhere, we're not out in the world somewhere, uh, not under a bridge somewhere. Lord, uh, uh, without your grace, we'd probably all be somewhere like that. Uh, but by the grace of God, here we are singing songs of praise unto the Lord uh, and worshiping you in spirit and in truth. And God, we thank you for it. Uh, now, Father, bless, help us uh, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help your people this morning. Uh, Lord, save that one nearest tell, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. Uh, uh, in the, the book of Genesis, we find some wonderful uh, and interesting characters. You find Adam and Eve. You find uh, 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 Abraham. You find uh, 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 Jacob, who becomes Israel. You find uh, uh, his sons. You find uh, Moses come on the scene. There's a lot of things we can glean from uh, in uh, uh, the book of Genesis. Uh, but I would like to focus on Joseph a little bit this morning. Joseph uh, is a, 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 a fellow who is a perfect picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Forty-two times uh, you'll find that he is an exact type uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and there were 42 generations from Abraham to, uh, to the Lord Jesus. Uh, uh, let me give you some things about Joseph leading up to where we are. Uh, uh, Joseph was the preferred son uh, of Jacob or Israel. Uh, Israel had 12 sons. Joseph was his favorite. Uh, I have a hard time understanding that. Uh, uh, I've got two sons, uh, but my daughter's my favorite. I have a hard time. and I'm just teasing. Uh, I love them all the same. Uh, uh, but I, I, he had a favorite son. He made Joseph a coat of many colors. Uh, and Joseph uh, was blessed of the Lord, uh, and that Joseph was given a gift uh, to be able to interpret dreams. Uh, and Joseph had a dream, and he interpreted to his brothers uh, uh, that one day he was going to rule over them. Well, they didn't like that. Uh, they didn't like it that he was the father's favorite, uh, and they didn't like it uh, uh, that uh, the father had had that special coat made for him, uh, and now he's all puffed up telling them he's going to rule over them. Uh, by the time we get to chapter 45, he is ruling over them. Uh, can I say God doesn't lie, uh, and God uh, is always right on time. Uh, uh, but uh, we find that he was the preferred son. Uh, can I say that when his brothers were mad, uh, uh, they placed him in a pit, uh, took that coat of many colors, uh, 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 killed a beast and put the blood on it, uh, and went and told their father Jacob that uh, Joseph had been uh, uh, killed, slain by a beast. Uh, and Jacob mourned uh, all the rest of the days till we get to chapter 45. Uh, he was grieved that his favorite son uh, was killed. Uh, uh, not only was the preferred son, and he was placed in a pit and sold into slavery uh, by his brothers, uh, but we find that when he gets down to Egypt, uh, he finds himself in Potiphar's house. Uh, Potiphar's a ruler there in Egypt. Uh, and Potiphar, uh, Potiphar finds favor, or Joseph finds favor in his eyes. Uh, and he's uh, uh, not a slave working out in the fields, uh, but he's a house servant, serving this uh, uh, ruler in Egypt. Uh, well, Potiphar had a wicked, li a wicked wife. Uh, tired of being home by herself, uh, looked upon Joseph, thought he was a handsome, strapping man, uh, and she desired to have him, uh, but Joseph, being a man of character, uh, Joseph, being a righteous man, uh, Joseph, who loved God, uh, uh, fled Potiphar's house, uh, uh, but she uh, uh, pulled his cloak off as he was leaving, uh, and she lied upon him, uh, told Potiphar uh, that he tried to force himself on her, uh, and we find that Joseph ends up in prison. Uh, 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 what a blessing, huh? While he's there, uh, he meets two of Pharaoh's uh, uh, top men. He meets a baker and a butler. Uh, and uh, uh, he begins to uh, uh, build a relationship with them. Uh, he finds favor with the jailer. Uh, can I say it don't matter if you're in a palace uh, or in a prison. Uh, uh, if you know God uh, and you uh, seek after God, uh, you'll always have God's favor on your life. Uh, and we find, uh, 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 while he's there, uh, he interprets some dreams. Uh, and the baker and butler both uh, make promises. We ever get out of here, we're telling Pharaoh about you. Uh, only for them to get out and not tell Pharaoh. 
and he spends a, a, a good portion of his life in prison. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Pharaoh has a dream. Uh, and nobody in the land of Egypt can interpret this dream. Uh, and one of them fellas say, hey, hey. You got a guy down there in jail. Uh, I, I remember he uh, interpreted a dream for me. He could do it. Uh, and they brought Joseph out of prison. Uh, and he interpreted uh, Pharaoh's dream. Uh, and Pharaoh promotes him uh, uh, over all the land of Egypt. Uh, the dream was famine was coming. And they needed uh, uh, to put up so much crop and do so much uh, because for seven years they wouldn't have anything. So while the rest of the world was in a dearth, we find Egypt prospered because of the voice of Pharaoh. And in uh, the midst of all of that, his family goes without. Jacob sends the boys, go to Egypt and see if we can't get some corn, if we can't get some meal, if we can't get enough supplies to survive. When they show up, they don't recognize Joseph, but he recognizes them. Hmm? And he works out a way to see his younger brother send them back and make a long story short Joseph reveals himself to his brothers in chapter 45 and Pharaoh's pleased to hear about Joseph's family and because of Joseph Pharaoh's going to bless his family aren't you glad because of Jesus God blesses us huh aren't you glad uh, uh, because of on the account of the Lord Jesus uh, you and I uh, are faring much better than we deserve today. Well, let's look at our text. I want to you know, bring out a few things in our text. I want you to notice, first of all, the hand of God. Look at verse number 8. Joseph is speaking to his brothers. He says, So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. I like it when you see that conjunction, but before God. That means uh, the whole situation's about to change because uh, God's the one who's involved. Uh, but God, and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and lord over all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Uh, in chapter number 50 and verse 20, uh, 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 Joseph told him this. He says, uh, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, uh, but God, there it is again, but God meant it unto good uh, to bring to pass as it is this day to sub much, save much people alive. Uh, I afraid not everything you go through uh, is the judgment hand of God. Uh, not everything you go through uh, has caught God by surprise and you think God doesn't care. Uh, it might be your right to center of God's will uh, and God's got you there for a purpose uh, and it might be that much people are saved alive uh, because because you're right where God wants you to be. Uh, we see the hand of God. I want you to notice the hastening. Look at verse number 9. He said, Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord over all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. Can I say, the king's business requires haste. And can I say, you and I sitting here today, uh, we make plans and we uh, 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 set goals and we have desires, uh, but never lose sight of the fact uh, the king's business requires haste. Uh, there are people dying and going to hell, uh, and we are ambassadors of heaven. Uh, we are to shine our light uh, and to be the salt uh, and to throw out a lifeline uh, uh, that others can come into the family of God. Uh, the king's business requires haste. We see the hand of God. We see hastening. Now notice heeding. Look at verse number 20. Pharaoh says unto them, Also regard not your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. He said, Don't worry about all your junk at the house. You'll have it better here. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, look with me down in verse 24. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, See that ye fall not out by the way. Can I say, I appreciate that you come and hear preaching. I'm amazed you come back week after week to hear my preaching. Uh, but I'm amazed to hear preaching. But do you heed the preaching? Hmm? Pharaoh says, uh, Regard not your stuff. Can I say too many of you got too many stakes driven here 
You're regarding your stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. You ought to take care of your stuff. You ought to be thankful for your stuff. Uh, you don't want to abuse your stuff. Uh, but don't put too much stock in your stuff. Uh, because where we're headed, there's a lot better than what you've got. Uh, uh, we've got all of a heaven waiting on us. Uh, and don't pay too much attention to your stuff uh, and focus on what's ahead. Uh, uh, and then Joseph says, see that, uh, see that you not fall out in the way. Uh, and can I say, uh, don't fall out in the way. Uh, don't fall into a ditch. Uh, don't get out of the way called straight. Uh, uh, you're headed in the right direction. Uh, stay on this path, uh, this holy highway to heaven. Uh, don't get sidetracked. Uh, don't get shipwrecked. Uh, don't become a casualty or a statistic in the way of faith. Uh, keep on keeping on for Jesus. Uh, uh, hey, we've got something worth going to heaven for. Uh, we see the heating. And then notice the heralding. Look at verse 25. Look when these boys got back to Jacob. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. He is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph when he said, uh, which he had said unto them when they saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Notice what they had to say. They said, he's alive. I got good news today. Jesus is alive. We're not serving a dead Jew. We're serving the risen Savior. Uh, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Uh, hey, He's making intercession for you and I. Uh, he's dispatching what we need here on earth. Uh, he's alive. Uh, he's alive. Uh, we don't have to grieve. Uh, we didn't come out to a funeral this morning. Uh, we came out to a celebration of life uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Uh, he's alive. Uh, not only that, uh, he said Joseph is Lord. Uh, I've got news for you. Uh, he's Lord. Uh, he's Lord of Lords. Uh, King of Kings. Uh, nothing uh, gets done without him doing it. Uh, and then uh, notice what else. Uh, they see saw the wagons in his heart revived. Uh, can I say this? Uh, he's not only alive, he lives. Uh, He's not only Lord, uh, but He loads us up. Hallelujah. Uh, I didn't come to leave empty. Uh, I come to get filled up this morning. Uh, and our darling Savior knows how to load us up. Uh, I got to thinking about uh, those wagons. Uh, can I say He's got a wagon full of grace this morning. Uh, if you got need of grace, He's got it. Uh, he's got a wagon full of forgiveness. Uh, if you're lost and on your way to hell, Jesus saves. Uh, he'll forgive you of your sin. Uh, if you're saved and you stepped in a mud puddle this week, uh, Jesus forgives all sin. Uh, he'll clean you up. Uh, hey, he's got a wagon of joy this morning. Uh, maybe you don't have much to rejoice in. Uh, hey, today might be your wagon of joy. Uh, he's got wagons of joy. Uh, He's got wagons of goodness, uh, wagons of loving kindness, uh, wagons of tender mercy, uh, wagons of long suffering. Uh, what do you need today? Uh, he's got it in abundance. Hallelujah. I want to preach with God's help on this thought until your wagons come in. Until your wagons come in. Not much is said about how long Jacob sat out there on that porch waiting for them boys to come home. And can I say, you may be sitting here today and you've been praying for God to do something for a long time and your faith is dwindling. Mm, let me help you with what you need to do till that wagon comes in. Can I say, first of all, until your wagons come in, you need to be anchored. Uh, there's too many that are carried about by every wind of doctrine. There are too many that are confused. There are too many uh, that uh, haven't settled down. Can I say that 
we have the rock of ages. And he's the anchor within the veil for our soul. But we need to be anchored into him. We need to get settled in him. We need to be indoctrinated in him. Uh, so when the winds of adversity come, it don't blow us off the porch. Can I say you need to be anchored? Why? Because doubts will arise. Uh, you may be sitting here today wondering if God's even heard your prayers. I promise you, unless you regard iniquity in your heart, he has. You may be here thinking, God don't care about me. Oh, but he said, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. He said he has loved you with an everlasting love. Nobody's ever loved you like Jesus loves you. You may be sitting here and the devil beating up on you saying you're worthless, you're unlovable. Why would God love you? And well, the devil's a liar and the father of it. Can I say, uh, God's the one that formed you in the womb. Uh, God's the one that went to Calvary and died for your sin. Uh, God's the one that convicted you of your sin and saved your soul when you called upon him. Uh, God's been there that sustained you and helped you. Everything you've got came from the hand of God. Uh, God does love you. Uh, hey, but you need to be anchored so when the devil lies, you can tell him you're a liar. You need to be anchored because doubts will arise. Devastation may surface. You may face some storms in your life. We never sign up for them. Uh, I think about all them folks down eastern Kentucky. 10, 12 days ago, they was going on life as usual. It's going to be decades before they get back to life as usual. They never say, hey, God, send a, send a torrential flood our way. They never prayed for that. Uh, why did it happen, preacher? I don't know. I'm not God. But I know he does all things well. I don't know why he did all that. There's a reason for it. And can I say, I don't know why you went through a storm. But God's got a reason for it. But devastations may surface. You may face some storms. Listen, I don't know why there are ladies in our church whose husbands chose to walk away from them. I don't know why that happened. I don't know why there are fellows whose wives walked away from I don't understand that. I don't know why that was a devastation. They never signed up for that. They said till death do us part. I don't know why that happened. There are folks who have buried their children in our church. I don't understand that. That goes against nature. I don't understand that. I don't understand those storms. But that was devastating. There are folks who have uh, buried other loved ones. There are folks who have faced a, a great trauma that have uh, uh, challenged the very fiber of their core. You better be anchored. You'll come unglued if you aren't. And devastation comes. The Bible says, God lets it rain on the just and the unjust alike. I don't know why there are people sitting here broken hearted because they have loved ones that are out in the world. I don't know why. But I know God's a merciful God. And I know God cares about them. And God seeks to save them. We just need to pray that the Holy Ghost gets on the trail. Hmm? Can I say, you may face some storms. You may face some famine. Huh? Sleepy Joe's doing everything he can to destroy your pocketbook. Obama didn't want to, uh, uh, it to end until gas got equal with Europe, and Sleepy Joe's trying to carry it out. They're paying about $10 a gallon for fuel over there. Hmm? Uh, I don't know if you've tried to get anything at Kroger's. Caitlin, do something about that. you got more empty shelves than you got than you got. Uh, Full shelves. Now, they can blame it on China all they want. They can blame it on supply chain all they want. But, uh, hey, the government's controlling all that. Hmm? Uh, what they don't tell you is just mysteriously, one of Walmart's biggest distribution centers about three months ago w uh, was destroyed in a massive fire. They don't, they don't explain that to you on the news. Who set the fire? You say, the government would never do that. No, they'd never charge David Koresh down there in, in Texas either and destroy them. Huh? Uh, well, I'm telling you, the government always seeks to control the narrative. But I wouldn't put anything past evil men. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, why is there a shortage of anything in America? Hmm? We don't buy everything from China, but can I say something? We don't get corn from them. We don't get beans from them. 
Huh? We don't get beef from them. Huh? We don't get milk from them. Why is there a shortage? Somebody don't want you to have it. Because they're getting everything ready to where everybody has to depend on the government so when the Antichrist comes, it'll be easy takeover. Hmm. I'm just telling you. Until Jesus comes, it might get real lean. And we're not used to dealing with lean in America. We're used to dealing with excess. Hmm. Just, just talk to Nas and ask him what the grocery stores look like on the island and in comparison to what Kroger used to look like before all Biden took over. Huh? Just ask him. He'll tell you, first time he came to America, he'd never seen so much food. Hey, first year he's here, he put 25 pounds on about the first two months. <laughs> then he stayed that summer with Brother Doug, and he ate chicken out the wazoo and put on another 40 pounds, huh? No, doesn't have it down there. I say, famine may be coming. You better be anchored. Yeah. I say, you need to be anchored. Doubts will arise. Devastation may surface. Have a, can I help you with this? The devil may show up. If you're not anchored, he'll run over you like they ran over that asphalt when they laid it down in them steamrollers here last week. Uh, better be anchored. Till your wagons come in, you've got to be anchored. When I say this, you've got to be active. Hmm? You know, they tell me when somebody retires, if they don't stay active, they just wear, you know, whittle away. But people that stay active, life goes on, and they're very productive. You've got to be active. Jesus never told us, sell everything, go sit on a hillside, and wait for Hail Bob the Comet to come to take us out of here. He said, occupy till I come. That's what he said. We've got to be active. We've got to be active in our service for the Lord. Hmm? You somebody, Somebody's up and down, in and out. I'll show you somebody that's not anchored. I'll show you somebody whose wagons aren't going to have much when he shows up. You've got to be active in service. You've got to be active in supplication. Prayer is our lifeline to God. You've got to be active in studying the Word of God. That's how God speaks to us. That's how you grow your faith. That's what anchors you in the Lord. And listen, you cannot be anchored without being active. God help us. So our wagons come in, we've got to be anchored, we've got to be active, then we've got to be ample. That means patient. I hate that word. Miss Nett's going bonkers over this baby. I said, you do know we got about seven and a half months before he, before he or she shows up. Uh, I didn't say he, she. I said he or she, <laughs> Phil. Uh, she's wanting to hold it now I said well Taya's pretty big to hold the baby's only about the size of a raspberry right now huh? so, so you got to be patient huh? she's picking out all this stuff and everything so he don't need an in-ground swimming pool yet no that wasn't her that might have been me but anyway Christian wants me to buy another sports car, one with four, you know, back seat in it. Wrong. Go borrow, go borrow, brother Brian's. All right. Uh, what can I say? We got to be patient. I alluded to it a minute ago. God's timing is not our timing, and our timing is not God's timing. Just because you think you need it right now, don't mean you need it right now. God's always right on time mm -hmm. I think about that song Miss Lynn sings about the being on the potter's wheel Lord I need you and I need you right now that's how we Americans are we want instantaneously satisfaction but see God knows not to pull us out of the brick kiln too soon because then we'll crumble under the pressure he knows just how long to keep us there. You just got to be patient. 
God knows what you have need of. Did not Jesus say, if, he, if the Father knows every sparrow that falls to the ground, that he knows what you have need of? We're worth more than many sparrows to God. He knows what you have need of. And you've never done without. Not if you're a child of God and you put God first, you've never done without. Even if you're a child of God and you're a sorry child of God, you've still not done without. You just got to learn to be patient. I got to learn to be patient. I'm going to make this statement. I've seen it play out so many times. Too many quit right before the blessing comes. Your wagon's on the way. Now, I don't know if it's closer to Egypt than it is here. I don't know where it's at in the process, but I do know this. It's been dispatched. Don't quit. Your wagon could come in today. Don't quit. Just be there on the porch waiting till your wagon shows up. Got to be ample. Got to be patient. Let me say this lastly. You got to anticipate. Hmm? Today may be the day. Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Hmm? Got to anticipate. Now, kids Google this, but y'all remember in the 70s, that ketchup commercial, anticipation, and it took forever for that ketchup to drop out of that bottle. Uh, all you want is ketchup for your fries. Hmm? Uh, you remember that? Three of us remember that. Huh? Hmm? What can I say? You just might want to wet your lips. The ketchup may be on the way out of the bottle today. You've got to anticipate that ketchup. When I, I remember watching that commercial when I was young. I remember I could taste the ketchup. Huh? Really? You see that and you can taste it. You ever notice when there's a food commercial, they don't show you a cheeseburger like the one you get in the bag through the drive-thru. It's all smashed. It looks like somebody already ate it. Huh? No, they show this big, robust bun and this big, thick patty. It's got more meat on it than, than any cheeseburger you've ever eaten. And it's got all the fixings, and they all just look wonderful, and your lettuce looks wilted uh, and all that stuff. But they show that thing, and if you watch that commercial, you can almost taste it. Shoot, when I start talking about food, some of you can almost taste it. When we get to where we can almost taste what it has for us, your wagon may just pull in. Huh? But as long as you're satisfied without the wagon, the wagon's never going to show up. You've got to anticipate the wagon. Listen, God didn't forget about Jacob. It took a long time for him to hold Joseph again. When them wagons came in, it revived his heart. And God knows how you're hurting. God knows what you're faced with. Your wagon's on the way, friend. Just keep looking for it. And by looking for it, I mean keep looking for him. Because he's what's in the wagon. He's on his way. That's just what you need. Don't quit now. Don't get sidetracked now. Keep your eye on the prize. His name is Jesus. And your wagon of help may even show up today. Get to where you hunger for him more than anything else. And you'll never have a famine in your soul. Let Jesus load your wagon today. Let's all stand. Let the clink come get a song of invitation. Well, they're coming and getting a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the providing hand of God. Lord, thank you for always being exactly what we need. Thank you for knowing what we need. Thank you for sending what we need. And Lord, thank you for the abundance. A lot of times you bless us far beyond what we need. God, we bless your holy name. Father, I don't know anybody's heart in here today. I just know you put that message in my heart. There may be somebody here today that's really hurting. God, I pray you'd send a wagon full of the balm of Gilead. Maybe somebody here, Lord, that's lost. I pray you'd send a wagon of conviction. Lord, I pray they'd come. 
repent of their sins and give them a wagon load of forgiveness. Fill them with a wagon load of love and joy and peace. Lord, there's some that are troubled. Lord, send them strength. Whatever the need is, Lord, I pray that, Lord, they'd get their eyes on you. Lord, they'd find the help they need. God bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. and Be glorified in what you do. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn away. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.